At first glance, Bhutan and Denmark present two completely diverse nations, progressing at a vastly different pace of development. Their acute dissimilarities accentuated further by the physical spans of oceans and continents that lie between. To the northern part of Europe, flanked by Sweden, Norway and Germany, the Kingdom of Denmark is an advanced economy with 406 islands and a population of 5.6 million. As one of the world's oldest monarchies, it carries the legacy of a vibrant history dating back to the Vikings in 900 AD. On the other side of the world, nestled in the vast Himalayas, the Kingdom of Bhutan is a small, landlocked and developing nation which opened its doors to the rest of the world only in the late 1960s. Bhutan is steeped in cultural wealth and natural heritage, possessing a soul and identity as large as its giant neighbors, India and China. Yet despite insurmountable differences, both nations are linked by underlining commonalities that bind them together. As two monarchies, Denmark and Bhutan share a great passion in investing in human capital and welfare, for which they are recognized globally. Bhutan is increasingly known for its guiding development philosophy of gross national happiness, which places the well-being of its people above economic growth. And Denmark has made immense strides as a strong welfare state under the Scandinavian welfare model. I think the best explanation is that we have a great deal of confidence in each other. We have no corruption and we have great confidence in um, the police and the justice system. Uh, we believe that everyone is treated fair. Denmark is often cited as one of the best nations in the world to live in and was ranked the happiest nation in the world by the UN in April 2012. As a strong welfare state, the Danish government has ensured equality for its people and over the years produced a highly educated, innovative and industrious workforce where the contributions of its men and women are widely celebrated. Equality of opportunity and supportive policies for a conducive work-life environment with flexible working conditions has been instrumental in building a strong level of participation of women in governance. We have found a very good combination. Uh, so you have time for your work, time for the family, time for yourself. Uh, and, and I think that's the reason. One of uh, the reasons that we are number one as the most hap happiest uh, country is also uh, gender equality. And I think that's, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's very important because it's important having both men and women engaging in society, in work life, and actually also uh, in the domestic life, in the home, and, and ta uh, taking care of the, the children. In 2011, Denmark elected its first female prime minister, Hella Thorning Schmidt, and after a hundred years since its women's suffrage movement, has a significant 40% representation of women in parliament. An agrarian economy, Bhutan, like most developing nations, faces the daunting challenges of sustainable growth and employment for a growing young population. However, it was under the wise and far-sighted leadership of Bhutan's fourth dragon king, Jigmi Singhi Wanchuk, that the unique development philosophy of gross national happiness was formulated and implemented in the national planning process. And throughout modern history, alongside the fourth dragon king, their majesties the queen mothers have led through example tirelessly serving the nation and contributing towards improving the welfare of the people of Bhutan through the exemplary work of numerous philanthropic institutions. Bhutan is one of the world's youngest democracies. Unlike its compatriots, 
democracy in Bhutan was a sacred gift that emanated from the Golden Throne. After a century of benevolent rule by the monarchy, His Majesty the King, Jigme Singhi Wanchuk, at the age of 53 years, relinquished his powers to the fifth and present king, Jigme Kesa Namgyal Wanchuk, and to the people of Bhutan. In 2008, Bhutan held its first ever parliamentary elections, making the transition to a democratic constitutional monarchy. Although women and girls constitute 51% of the population and enjoy a greater status compared to their counterparts in the region, they currently constitute only 14% representation at the national parliamentary level. During the 2008 elections, for a total of 47 seats in the lower house, only nine female candidates contested, out of which all four Druk Pinsum Sokpa women were elected. Karmal Hamo from the Eastern District in Bhutan is one of the four elected women parliamentarians from the Druk Pinsum Sokpa Party, or DPT. Her constituency, Mongar, is an impoverished and largely rural district suffering from poverty and low educational coverage. In general, people feel that politics is not is the game of rich people. They feel that like children of the farmers, especially from the rural areas, uh, from the remote areas, like they cannot take such, they cannot avail such opportunities. I wanted to uh, clear that mis uh, misconception. So even during my campaign, I used this strategy. I always said that I came forward just to show the example to my girls, to my rural girls and the rural parents that. Uh, even the rural daughters can join, come forward, and be the leader. The Nagi that you did Himal and Babu Bindi Nadi Namseme Drochila to the Nadam Mudidele. The Mogi, the Nemegi, the Yu, Nazi, the Thomas Hamasovach in the Tuna Ritum, no, the Ayngachi Uya Mudidele. They should do the Chimsa Sugilambe, the Namseme Saja Bemongo. As for the upper house elections, for a total of 25 seats, out of a total of six women candidates who contested, four women were elected, and two more women were assigned as nominees by His Majesty the King. Of the four women contestants, Sangisam, who was previously an educator, is the National Council representative for the capital city, Thimpu. All our life, for 25 years, we've been telling children to have a dream in their pocket and reach out for the stars and things like that, you know. And then when these democratic changes were coming about, you know, you know, so much change, and I wasn't just going to stand out there and watch the change happen, you know. So I thought, okay, might as well be, you know, the best way to learn is to get on the wagon and, you know, and then you learn more about the change, and that's how it began. Well, we've been discussing this uh, politics uh, on a number of occasions. And uh, that time I w we were in Fitzling, and then uh, as this uh, political fever was developing, so we said, why not? While there's support for women's empowerment from the royal government of Bhutan, and national policies highlight the importance of encouraging wider women's participation, Today, only 5% of Bhutanese women are represented at the local government level, most of whom occupy the lowest ranking post of Tsokpa or community representatives. <laughs> 